So the word innovation, um, people throw it around. Sometimes it's just a, a word in a document and it doesn't mean much. Does it mean something to you? I know it's in your job title. And you know, what are you doing around innovation to really um, you know, drive uh, your country into you know, go to the next level and, and be a world leader? Okay, let me just make this point first about innovation. I think you have to think about innovation and thought. And what I was speaking about in my TED talk was about the changes in thinking about issues in Ireland, mm -hmm. from the old Ireland to the new Ireland, to the Ireland that passed the marriage uh, equality referendum. But in my current job, when I think about innovation, I think about the challenges the world is going to face ahead. I think about the food security issues around the world. Sure. I think about the changing energy needs. And I think about Irish business in particular, um, creating new products. Uh, new apps, new ways of thinking about these issues, and I think about them going around the world with new products, and we're seeing that. Uh, the world of you know, robotics, of artificial intelligence, uh, all of the medicine that's going to be more customized. Um, I think about the companies in Ireland, the uh, American companies working in Ireland, the Irish companies who come over here, um, working together, and one of the ways I think about it is that the best innovation comes out of partnerships. So we have a lot of partnerships between universities, uh, industry and business, uh, research scientists, and the government working together, uh, you know, really focusing on the challenges of our time and inventing those new products. So that's the way I think about innovation. Great, w well, well put. Um, a big part of your talk right now was about uh, inclusion. Can you talk a little bit about what it was like being the architect behind uh, some of the ways Ireland has led on inclusion? What do people not know about how hard it was to pull off uh, what you did? And, and uh, what, were, um, what are some of the ramifications globally for the leadership Ireland ta has taken recently in inclusion? Well, I think if you look at the marriage equality referendum in Ireland and the fact that we were the first country that did it by way of popular vote, we've seen the results of Bre <laughs> we've seen the results of Brexit recently. When you had a referendum, and I would say, you know, people didn't know enough about what the implications were, and they didn't, you know, it wasn't worked out enough. We found from referendums you have to prepare people, you have to really go into the details. So when we were doing the marriage uh, referendum, we had to look at all of the consequences, you know, for adoption. Uh, for property, all of those kind of questions. People wanted answers to those. So I think the fact that we did that by way of popular votes means that we can be a leader around the world saying to people, there's no need to be frightened about this. You know, this is about bringing out the very best in people. And you asked me about, you know, equality in Ireland generally. We still have quite a way to go, as, as you know, most countries in the world do. I mean, there's the whole socioeconomic environment uh, and disadvantage uh, that people can have. And I suppose the big message is people are so fearful about immigration and so fearful about, you know, people from maybe other countries. You know, it's, it's a win-win. And that's what we've learned about the contribution. Migrants don't cost a country. They contribute to an economy, and they contribute socially and culturally in every other way. Now, every country is kind of dealing with this, so we don't have any magic answers, but I think it's good to really look at inclusion from a different perspective, instead of fear and keeping the other out. So my question is, how do you create a, what my friend Nancy Klein calls a thinking environment so we can think really well and not in a, in a stereotype way? Uh, about these issues. There's too much stereotyping in America and, and, and in other countries about this. So, so you just mentioned um, immigration, and that's uh, top of the, the, the global agenda these days. Ireland is known for being so welcoming and its hospitality. What do you think the world could learn from how Ireland is dealing with immigration and, and, and refugees? Well, you know, the first point I would make is that, you know, Irish people have been welcomed all over the world. And of course, America has been so welcoming and has given so many of our people, you know, such opportunity. And, you know, that's a wonderful model for the way, the way that America welcomed Irish people at the height of the famine uh, and afterwards. So, you know, we have to look at what America did for Irish people as well. Um, it was hard. It wasn't always easy, you know. Mm -hmm. um, we're still struggling in Ireland with integration. But I think if we focus on integration, um, we, can, we can make big difference, both locally and nationally. But I think it's a bigger issue, John. I, I think we have to think about Africa. 
we have to think about developing countries because you know the refugee crisis that I've been heavily involved in through my work as Minister for Justice in the European Union you know that is about dealing with the countries of origin and helping countries around the world uh, to grow and develop and to keep their own people as well you're always going to have migration and people will want to move by choice but this forced migration is the issue at present because of the circumstances. So unless we do what you know, President Obama talked about at his UN Conference for Refugees, which I attended last year, and approach this with strong international organizations working to improve the conditions and, and make it a real choice for those young men, uh, who are now traveling into southern Europe, make it a real choice for them to have opportunity in their own homes and their own places. We're not going to solve this issue. Right. So I work in Boston and in Silicon Valley, and many of the tech leaders I know are spending time in Ireland. Ireland had a financial crash in 2008, as, as many countries did, and yet uh, Ireland recovered, and many American tech companies do a lot of business in Ireland. What was the um, or were some of the elements of, of kind of recovery for Ireland and, and how has Ireland attracted so much US business and, and you know, what do you see in the future around that? Well, I think that um, we had a very a tough time, but people, government took very difficult decisions. The government I was part of for the last seven years, we had to take very difficult decisions. But the Irish people had to put up with a lot of, of difficulties, huge unemployment, um, incomes crashing, uh, house properties devaluing, we relied on a property sector, we relied on construction, and it's been a painful recovery. But the really good news is that Ireland has recovered. And in terms of American companies, what I would say is Ireland now would be the only English-speaking uh, country in the Eurozone. That's really important. We're strong and committed members of the European Union. That's not going to change. Uh, we have a, you can rely on our legal system and our regulatory standards. And we're pro-business and pro-enterprise, and that attracts. It's also a, a path uh, towards Europe for many American companies. Ireland is a really good place to have your business and move into the rest of Europe. So we're really encouraging that, and also that sort of ecosystem I've talked to you about uh, in relation to innovation. That's very attractive, where you have partnerships uh, supporting innovation. Great, so you're one of the uh, global leaders of the world at a time when we're more hyperly connected than ever before. Um, what kind of conversations do you have with peers from other countries who have similar roles? And you know, we see so much gridlock in, in politics today. Are you able to make progress and do you see breakthroughs on the horizon country across country to country? And, and, and what are you doing to help in, in ensure that? Well, you know, diplomacy and relationship building is always so important. There's no substitute for it. But they're very difficult conversations at present in the world. And, you know, politics is so denigrated. And, you know, it's really difficult. I think we should really try and get some respect back uh, for politics. And I do think that the recessions in Europe, uh, the recession we had in Ireland, it's very alienating for people. And I go back to the point about inclusion. If people don't feel they're going to have opportunity, equal opportunity. And uh, John Fitzgerald Kennedy was so you know, strong on that, all of the Kennedys. I mean, I think equality of opportunity, you know, it's, it's, it's for the whole community. That's what makes the difference. And I don't think very often we make a strong enough connection between the kind of progress the world needs and that concept of inclusivity. And that was really my key point today. Sure. Um, have you been to the Kennedy Library before? I've been once before, yeah. but I'm really yeah. looking forward to visiting. So what is it, what, how does it make you feel to be back uh, here? It must have you know, a special place for you, uh, given the John F. Kennedy's Irish heritage. Well, I've always been in love with America. You know, yeah. I first came here when I was 18 on a short visit. And um, I've always loved the enthusiasm of America. I've mm -hmm. always found it a very optimistic place, actually. Mm -hmm. I know America has its challenges now, like mm -hmm. every other country in the world. But I w I've always found an incre incredible energy and optimism here. And I think that takes you very far in life, if you can hold on to that, despite the challenges. Yeah. So you talked about uh, you know, two Irelands, the past and, and, and where we are today. Maybe talk about the Ireland you'd like to see in the future. Uh, and you know, I won't hold you to it, and it won't be a campaign <laughs> promise, but I just think it's interesting to, to hear a politician kind of have a, a vision 
and, uh, and how would you sequence the things you'd like to see in the future? Like, what do you need first? You need an Einstein and a Newton and a, you know, what, what are, what, how well, does the future go? You know, what we have to do is you have to continue the economic recovery because without an economic recovery, you know, without your strong economy, you don't have the money to invest in the kind of services that you'd really like to see for people, comprehensive health and education. So I'm a big believer in driving that economy I spoke to you about, that knowledge economy, mm -hmm. uh, you know, really supporting technology in our businesses. That's very important. You've got to keep driving that. But then you have to say, what are we driving it for? You know, mm -hmm. what kind of a society, as you say, do we want to create? And it has to be one where we deal in my view, at this point in time, mm -hmm. uh, with disadvantage yep. and giving people opportunity, particularly focusing on young children. Mm -hmm. And we have a great system of, of free preschool now for two years for children between three and five, and it's, it's open to everybody and it's, it's very inclusive. That's yeah. a good start. So I'd like to see more focus on the early years and on early education, because I think that makes a real difference in the long term. So having the resources to do that would be a big priority for me. And then I think you need specialist programs for our more disadvantaged areas. You have to have a very clear target of dealing with the exclusion that some communities feel. And that involves dealing with the alcohol issues and the drug issues, which are just still destroying some of our communities. Great. So last question um, on the marriage equality. Um, you know, it's hard to be the first. You guys were the first and set a high bar. What happened after that around the world, the shock waves, uh, that people may not know or that you want to amplify that, that happened that people should, should know? And do you think um, progress is faster than you thought it would be around the world, about the same or, or less? Oh, I think it's still very difficult in some countries. Mm -hmm. um, it was great to see Australia uh, making a decision, that, you know, which mm -hmm. will be implemented before the end of the year, I yeah. think, by their government. Um, but, you know, the, the people are still suffering dreadfully um, in some countries in the world. There's dreadful persecution and yeah. torture of people uh, because mm -hmm. they're gay. So there's a lot of work to be done. I mean, we're a small country. It Mm -hmm. It ripples out slowly, yeah. um, but it's a good example. You know, if things didn't fall apart. Yeah. You got anything you know else up your sleeve that people may not? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Actually, last question. What <laughs> movies do you like? What, what books do you read? Just You're <laughs> such an important person. I want uh, the public to kind of know a little bit about you. What I like food it. do you like? I, uh, <laughs> uh, very eclectic. Yeah. Um, uh, I love Isabel Allende. Oh, okay, sure. It's yeah, a yeah, great, yeah. great yeah. favorite of mine. Great. Um, I Maya, her at Ted, yeah. did you? Yeah. Maya Angelou. Yeah, great. I yeah. love what she says when she says it's not the way you. Th I, I forget the exact quote. You probably Can you make know. Make an honorary job. Irish citizen. Yeah, oh, well, I'd love to. Yeah. But you know the way she says about when you're speaking to people, it's it's, it's not what you know. It's not what you say, and it's not all of the ideas. But mm -hmm. it's about the way you make people feel. Great. And I, I just think that's a, a tremendous quote from her. Movies, anything that sort of uh, is light and comedy, and you know. Yep. If, you ever like do start up, if you ever want to do stand-up <laughs> comedy at TEDx Beacon Street, uh, you're welcome back. You guys, thank you. Uh, one of the classiest world leaders in the world, Deputy Prime Minister Francis Fitzgerald. Thank you.